Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and habla los in the name of Jesus Christ. Dios le bendiga. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. God is awesome. Today we're going to continue the subject on righteousness. It's going to be righteousness number two. Because one of the problems Christians have been having is walking in victory in this life. You do not have to go to heaven in, in order to walk in victory. We could walk in victory over sin. You do not have that poor excuse. Well, brother, I'm only human, so therefore I have a tendency of doing sin once in a great while. No, brother. Bible makes it very clear. Make no reservation for sinning of the flesh. No, make reservation for the flesh. A Christian tells me, oh, I, I fell into sin. I, I didn't know how I got it. I made a mistake. No, brother. Call it what it is. It's a sin. A fornication, adultery, is sin is sin. In other words, can you imagine, oh, I fell into sin. What am I doing here in the bed with this woman? And I'm not married to her. You did not fail. You made plans. You made reservation. You called the motel. You called your champagne. Guess what? I got good news. If you're a Christian, you should not continue allowing the devil to defeat you in your life. Just because we're tempted doesn't necessarily have to, we have to yield to the temptation. God makes it very clear the reason why a lot of Christians are seesaw Christians up and down, up and down like roller coaster is because they have not wept up. Now, I want us to read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. And the reason why I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the brother or sister, they're too embarrassed to go tell someone about the little nasty things they're doing behind closed doors. But I'm telling you, you should go talk to someone in the church and confess your faults to one to another. But because so many people, you go tell them and then they go tell everybody, did you know sister, sister, brother and brother's doing this? I understand sometimes you need self-deliverance. You need to know how to talk to God yourself and talk to God's word, and begin to speak the word of God, and begin to wake up, listen to this, I'm trying to help you brothers and sisters, if you have a little addictions, a little bad habits, you shouldn't be doing as a Christian, and you know, you repent, oh God, I'm so sorry, I don't want to do it, I'm still looking at those pornography once a month, I used to do it every day, but at least I'm doing only once a month brother, it doesn't matter. The Bible makes it very clear. The little foxes de destroys the vine. Just a little yeast will could cause the leaven, in other words, the bread to expand. A little sin could destroy your ministry. In other words, can you imagine? Here you are trying to go to Bible college or trying to do things for the Lord, but you have a little nasty habit that it still has control over you. Uh, it might be angry management you get mad and you hit somebody that is an issue you need to deal with it and confront that lying devil that lying devil has no power over you but a lot of people don't know how to exercise the power of God within them and rebuke that lying devil if it's a demon of homosexuality like God delivered me from homosexuality 18 years ago. God drawed me. You could see my testimony on my website. I was going through the sex saying, God delivered me, brought me from that demon. But the thing about it is just that some people don't know how to deal with the demons they were bound by in this addiction. But this is the good news that I am have here. I'm not here, oh, you're going to go to hell. No, I'm here to tell you, if you're really born again, if you're a true Christian, I know people do fall into sin as Christians. You might not commit adultery, but you fantasize or you might masturbate or you fantasize about that woman. You've already committed adultery. So either way, 
is irrelevant. The thing is sin is sin. It's not a mistake. Oh, I mean, no. Call it what it is, brother. It's not a mistake. It's a sin. Sin is sin. If you lie, if you have a problem lying, if you have a problem cheating on your wife, and you, you used to do that, but you got saved, but you still want to do it after you got saved, don't tell me, I don't care if you're a pastor or a prophet or a teacher or an evangelist, any demon that you were bound by or addiction you were bound by, big nasty is going to try to come back and creep in back in the house to see if you're going to do it again. So take off those wings and become to reality. If you want to know how to deal with your issues, I got the good news. I'm here going to help you how God helped me with my perversion of homosexuality, how God did it with me. First of all, let's read Ephesians, I mean, 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. It says, wake up to righteousness and sin not. Now, it says, wake up. Hey, guy, wake up realize, begin to understand what righteousness means. It means right standing. That means that when Jesus died on the cross, you not only died with Jesus, you were crucified with Jesus. That, that means that sin, it could be a family curse, it could be pornography, it could be homosexual, like God delivered me from that demon of homosexuality. And let me tell you, it's not God's will for man to practice homosexuality. And I will discuss that later on. Okay, but the good news is, the problem was with me, I did not understand and I didn't understand what really Jesus did at the cross. See, it always goes back to the cross. The finished work. What you need to realize. And you need to bring to your attention. To your spirit. To your soul. To your body. And to begin to remind it of the power and the deliverance that Jesus did at the cross. If you have addictions with pornography. Masturbation. Uh, 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 lying, cheating, stealing, whatever you were bound by the demon before you accept Jesus, that same demon's going to try to come and tempt you. But the good news is you need to wake up, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 34, wake up, Brother Michael, and realize that the devil of homosexuality has been destroyed at the cross. But see, I knew Jesus died for me and, and he, he could save me, but I didn't realize the impact of what he did at that cross. You have to understand that when I accepted Jesus or you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that literally means that you died, you renounced yourself. I renounced Michael Fernandez my plans, my will, and my habits, my addictions, and I put it at the cross. I died with Jesus. And when I died with Jesus, now I was crucified. I nailed those demons of homosexuality. That could be sickness or perversion or pornography or masturbation. Whatever the demon was, it was nailed to the cross. My job is to bring it to your attention that you need to get down in your spirit, man, that God has delivered you, that that power of Satan has no right no longer anymore. Hallelujah. Now the question Regarding homosexuality, let me explain to all of my homosexual friends out there who are listening. I understand I was in prostitution and perversion. Let me tell you, when I got delivered from homosexuality 18, 19 years ago, when the Lord visited me in the dream and vision, I asked him, why then, listen to what the question was, why is it that some people are born with the desires and cravings? They call it in Toho, the desires, cravings. Okay, why is it that I had those cravings, I asked the Lord. And I, he told me the answer to that question is Romans 5, 12. 
You want to help someone who's bound by addiction, who's always saying, God made me homosexual. God never made a homosexual. God never made a liar, a cheater, an adulterer. What do you mean, brother? I'm glad you're asked. Let's go. I'm waking you up to reality. I'm waking you up to truth. And the Bible said truth will set you free. But you have to understand the word of God. You have to understand. If you really want to get deliverance, if you want to see the good news of God's truth, let's read Romans 5.12. I'm going to help you answer the question to all homosexuals who are listening. Because I was ex Homosexual, transsexual, prostitute. Thank you, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read Romans 5, 12. Here we go. We're going to go to Romans 5, 12. Now, the question was, are you ready for the question again? Why is it that some people were born with these desires? Does that mean that God made them that way? The answer to that question Jesus told me in that vision, he said, read Romans 5, 12. I'm waking you up. This is not only dealing with homosexual. It could deal with pornography. It could deal with addictions. It could deal with people having more than one wife, having, uh, lying and cheating or being stingy or gossiping. Whatever cravings you were born with, why were you born with those cravings? Why were you craving to have sex with another man being a man? Why? Why? I asked the Lord. Well, he told me to read Romans 5.12. Okay, Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. It is saying because of one man's sin, sin entered the world. Who is that one man? Let's read it again because I want you to understand this way you're going to help all the adulterers, all the liars, all the prostitutes, all the homosexuals, and all those who were born with two sexes, all those who were born physically deformed, all those who were born with Down syndrome. Why is this person born the way he's born? Why was he born with no eyeballs? Why was he born with no arms and no legs? Why was he born with two sexes? Why was he born with a uh, demon possessed? Why was he born with uh, desires to have sex with a man being a man or having sex with a woman or desires to have sex with an animal? Hello, I got the good news and the answer to all that questions. Here it is. Jesus told me, if you want to know the answer, read Romans 5, 12. And here's the answer to your question. Who was the cause of you born the way you were born with evil desires? Okay, here we go. It says, therefore, is by one man. That one man's sin entered to the world, did death by sin, so death passed upon all men. So we see here that it was because of Adam. It wasn't God Jehovah Father. God Jehovah Father created Adam to be perfect. He had no sin. He was pure. He was just like the Father God. He was created in the image of God, perfect. But when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, guess what happened, brothers and sisters? He ushered you and me and the whole world into the kingdom of Satan. You died spiritually. Because of whom? Who was it? Who was it? Was it God, Jehovah, who created a sinner? Was it God, Jehovah, who created a homosexual to be homosexual? Was it God who created you to be a liar or cheater or adulteress? Or someone who likes to have sex with that? Was it God? No. Who was it? Who was the one who caused all that trouble for someone to be born with two sexes or to be born premature or to have all the problems we're having in this world? Because of one man. Who is that man? Adam. Repeat after me. Adam. So the problem with all the homosexuals, with all the adulterers, with all the liars, all the drunkenness, the reason why you have the cravings within you since childbirth is because of Adam. God never made a liar. God never made a cheater, a thief, 
or homosexual or premature birth or people born sick or with demon possessed. It was because Adam tainted our spirit, our soul, our body. He tainted our spirit, soul, and body. That is the reason why all homosexuals who are, some homosexuals are born with those desires because of Adam. Some homosexuals because they were molested as children. Some are because they tried it because they wanted to see what it feels like. Uh, they just tried it to see whatever makes them turn them on. Whatever reason it was because of rape or because you were born that way because of Adam. God did not make you that way because the Bible makes it very clear. Let no man say that God tempts you with evil. God showed me this answer to help homosexuals because I was delivered from a demon of homosexuality. That is a demon. To be able to, to begin to crave, it's uncontrollable urge, to begin to desire those things that is not God is because your DNA, repeat after me, DNA are the manifestations of the flesh. Once you become born again, when you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the God's kingdom, you become a brand new creature. And guess what? The good news about that, when you become born again, you have the DNA of the Father. Of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The DNA of the Father is the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, and patience, and love. This, uh, this is your new DNA as a born-again believer. Now, those who are born in this world as a baby, you notice you do not have to teach a baby to lie. You do not have to teach a little baby to throw a hissy fits. Why? Because they are born into sin. Every one of us were born into sin, separated from God. Of course, if a child dies, he goes to heaven because of age accountability. I'm talking about every man was born in sin. So when you were born in sin, who is sin? Satan. You were born into his family and automatically when you're the family of the devil, you're going to desire the things what the devil desires, which is every evil work and every evil work of the flesh fulfilling the desire. This is what I'm doing, waking you up to understand how to deal with these problems. I'm trying to show you so how to deal with people who have those problems. The good news to all homosexuals, all adulterers, all people who are born sick or possessed or with no limbs, God is able to do a miracle. God is able to deliver you by you accepting Jesus Christ as Lord, who is the second Adam, hello, which is Jesus Christ. And the last Adam, who wants you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, guess what happens? You become a new creature. When you become a new creature, the power of sin will be broken. Once that power of sin is broken, you begin to reign in this life with Christ. But the problem with Christians today, they think just because you're tempted, just because the thought comes in your mind, you automatically have to yield yourself to it. No. The problem is we need to understand, wake up to righteousness and sin not. Understand the word understand the truth. God wants you to understand what he did at the cross when he made you right standing, not because what you could do is what he did at the cross. He justified you. He sanctified you. He reconciled you unto the Father, and he sealed you with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. The scripture makes it very clear to it makes it very clear where it says that he, the good work he started in you, he will complete unto the day of redemption. I give all glory and praise to Father Jehovah and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Everything I have, everything I will have is because my Father gave it to me. He gave me his favor. He gave me his goodness. He gave me his love. He had mercy. He delivered me from the demon of homosexuality. Hallelujah! Because I woke up when that devil, big nasty, came around him. Oh, remember this when you used to do onky tonk and shake your booty in the nightclubs? Remember? You had long blonde hair and thought you were all cute. Remember all these men used to do this and that? And I said, Devil! 
I had to bring it to your attention. You don't know what my Jesus did. He died on the cross that I died with him. I not only died with Jesus, I was crucified with Jesus. Not only crucified, I was buried with him in baptism. Not only when I was baptized, I was resurrected with him. Far above all powers and principalities. I bring it to the devil's attention that I have far above all powers. So when the devil, big nasty, comes and tempts you with your past life, you need to remind him, according to Romans chapter 6, let's read it. I want you to follow me because I'm trying to help you understand how did you do it, Brother Michael? How did you walk in victory when you had all these uh, those thoughts of the past coming? What I did, this is what I did. I began to speak to my spirit. I began to speak to my soul. I began to speak to my body to line up with the word of God. It said, Satan, flesh, spirit, body, hear what the word of the Lord said. This is what the word of the Lord says. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. It's what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Basically saying, shall I continue in sin knowing that God's going to forgive me because of his goodness? What did he say in verse 2? God forbid. Everybody repeat after me. God forbid. It says, God forbid. How? Everybody say how. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Basically, if you put a person who's dead right there, you could cook some fajitas or someone naked could walk across there. They won't be tempted. You know why? Why? Can you ask him why? Because he's dead. When you begin to recognize yourself dead, crucified, and resurrected, Far above all powers of principalities, you need to write a note under your feet. It says, Satan, here, read what's under my feet. You are a defeated foe. You have nothing in me. I am a new creature, and old things have passed away. So you have no power over me. I'm not of this world. I'm just passing through. I am a new species. The Bible says that he translated me out of the kingdom of darkness, planted me in the kingdom of God's dear son. This is what the Father did for me. He reconciled me to, I need to begin to preach to myself. You talk to everybody else. Well, you need to begin to talk to your body and begin to talk to your spirit. Michael Fernandez, shut up. You're dead to this world, but alive unto God. You are a new creature. That lying devil of homosexuality has no right over you. You are greater is he that is in you. You're dead to this world, but made alive unto God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Let's read verse. I want us to uh, read verse 6, chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this that our old man is crucified with him. That body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Why? Why? Because he died. Why do you allow yourself to do that? Well, good tempted. Well, do something about it. Don't just sit there and you're behind. And say, oh, Lord, do something. No, God is saying, you stand up to the devil and tell him to back off. Draw near to God. And then resist the devil. You need to draw near to God's word. Draw near to him and his precepts. And begin to divide, devour that word and feed your spirit day in and out. Then you begin to tell the devil, I rebuked you. And take the sword of the spirit and cut him down. And says, you're a liar. I'm dead to your power. I'm a new creature. You lied to me enough. I was created to be a man, not a woman. I'm a new creature Old things have passed away. Behold, all things becometh new. That's what I began to do, began to feed, and I began to tell my spirit, spirit, soul, and body, you are a new creature. You are created to be in God's image. You're not a woman. You're a man. You are a new creature. You can do all things, and the devil's a liar. I began to preach to man. I began to talk to myself. You need to begin to talk to yourself. Here, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, Whatever man thinks in his mind, 
so it be. So if you thank yourself more than a conqueror, that the power of devil has no more power over you, you will walk in that victory. Hallelujah. We'll continue this subject, brother, because this is awesome. This is very good. Because it's helping you to understand, to grow in God. Let me read one more verse, because just for the sake. It says in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter, uh, uh, Verse 23, chapter 4, verse 23. But be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Did you hear that? Renew in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man, which is after God is cre created in righteousness and true holiness. Did you hear that? Praise God. Renew your mind. And then when you do, you will walk in righteousness. You will know that you're righteous because what he did. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you ex need to accept Jesus right now, say, Jesus, come in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my filth in the name of Jesus, all my evil. I believe that you're the Son of God, and I confess Jesus is my Lord. And if you're sick, Receive the healing that God already provided at the cross. And I rebuke all cancer, AIDS, or diseases. In the name of Jesus, receive. Write me or call me for prayer requests. Hallelujah! Glory be to God in Jesus' name. Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and hablalos in the name of Jesus Christ. Dios le bendiga.